what knowledge might save your life one day? If you are ever bitten by a bat, raccoon, fox, or skunk go directly to the hospital. There is no cure for rabies once it is fully onset. Out of all history only five people survived rabies, Meredith Palmer being one of the five. If you're ever charged by a moose, get behind a tree. They have about a 10-inch blind spot and they'll lose you. That's what Ski Patrol would always say when there were an increase in moose sightings on the mountain. They tell you to stay out of the trees when skiing. Unless a moose is running at you, then find trees, because unless you've got a steep hill or are already up to speed, the moose is probably faster than you think. If you've been buried alive in a standard coffin, stay calm. If you are alive you haven't been buried that long, also the dirt above you hasn't set yet. Most coffins are not built to last once buried and as a result have weak sighting. So here's what you do. Pull your shirt over your head. You don't want to be swallowing dirt. Position yourself so you are as sideways in the coffin as possible with hands and feet pushing on the long sides. Push. You should be able to blow out one of the walls. Start crawling up. Do not panic. You may not find a grip immediately. Keep going until you make it out. Worst. Nightmare. Just reading that made me uncomfortable. And to find out which way is up. Spit. Gravity still works and will pull it down. Also true if you're covered by snow in an avalanche. If you call 911, always say where the problem is first, followed by the problem. If you happen to get cut off before you can say what the problem is, at least the dispatcher has a location to send an officer to check it out and advise if more police or fire is needed. Example. Operator. 911 where is your emergency? You? Help I am being stabbed disconnect. Versus. Operator, 911 where is your emergency? You, 742 Evergreen Terrace, help I am disconnect. Location, location, location. As someone who works at 911 I'll just add a bit of additional info. A lot of people assume we magically know where they are when they call 911, and sometimes we do, to an extent. When your phone call comes in there's two stages your phone call has, we call them a phase one and a phase two. Your phase one location will plot your location where the cell tower is, so if you don't tell us where you are before you disconnect and we have a phase one location, you're fricked if you're in an emergency. Sure, we can look up your phone history and see if there's any address associated with your phone number, but if there isn't any, good luck. When we get a phase two, most of the time it's pretty accurate, sometimes even being directly on top of where you are. I think the phase two location is based off of multiple cell tower hits that triangulate your location, but don't quote me on that. I'm actually not sure. If we get an open line phone Cal no one is talking, we hear stuff going on in the background we'll get a phase 2 location and send the police out to the area. Sometimes they find the person who called in. Sometimes they don't. Sideshow Bob can stab faster than you can explain. Makes sense. If someone is trying to abduct you, fight back. Most abductors will just give up if they meet resistance. And whatever you do, don't let them take you to another location. You ain't taken me to no secondary location. Street smarts. Get your money clip. When people say to take an aspirin to help during a heart attack, chew the pill. Don't swallow it whole. It gets absorbed much quicker. If the tide suddenly goes out unexpectedly, run like you stole it. For higher ground. I read about 10 year old English girl who had just learned this before going on vacation with her family to Thailand. Then the big tsunami that killed a few hundred thousand came. She saw the water retreat and the other tourist walk out on the exposed seafloor. She freaked out and convinced everybody to run for higher ground. A lot of people were saved by a little girl who had paid attention in school. They later brought a lot of flowers to the teacher. Imagine how terrifying that must be, knowing that a huge unstoppable wave is traveling hundreds of kilometers per hour to your location. And most people don't listen to you, just thinking you're a stupid kid who doesn't know any better. Fortunately, they believed her. Or perhaps she convinced her parents, who convinced the rest. Most likely somebody else also knew and reminded. From what I remember about this story, she was casually telling her parents about how receding water can mean a tsunami is coming, and a Japanese man nearby overheard her, realized that the water has indeed receded to an alarming amount, and started freaking out and they all told a lifeguard who immediately cleared the beach. That water you're about to dive into might not be as deep as you think. Always just step in and swim down to check for depth, then jump. Always do this. My dad told me a story about a group of guys he knew from school. After graduation they all went up to someone's lake house and one guy decided to dive off the dock as soon as they got there. 
The water was shallow that year and when he dove and he broke his neck and died on impact. Check for debris. Assholes like to dump trash. Getting impaled on rebar underwater is not a good way to go. Yes. Check for debris. We swam at the same hole four years and one time we showed up there was a submerged tree down there. I remember reading in a reddit post similar to this, that if you can't do a pull up you probably won't have the strength to pull yourself up off a ledge and that has stuck with me ever since. Yesterday someone posted a live leak video of those people who parker on high rise buildings falling to their deaths. I don't know why I'd watch it, but I watched some of them. Some of those people would do like three pull ups before losing their grip. So it seems like if you can't do a pull up where you pull yourself up to your waist, you may still be fricked. Those people really, really should have learned muscle ups first. It's basically the form you should have for pulling yourself up off a ledge. AFAIK it's one of the most essential basics taught in Parker. Don't ever stop performing CPR on a person until the EMTs take their body away. CPR doesn't wake up a person. It's to force blood to their brain to prevent brain death so that the EMTs can revive that person and find a CPR buddy to switch with regularly. Even if they don't know CPR, coach them throughout it. But if at all possible, don't do it alone. Why? Because it is super taxing and your arms will get tired and hurt really fast. And as said, you can't stop. To add to this, you need to use a lot of force. You will probably break the ribs. Don't stop. Living is more important than one or more broken ribs. And you should roughly be pumping to the beat of staying alive by the Bee Gees or another Bites to Dust by Queen depending on if you are a glass half full type of person or not. I would add, don't stop CPR when the paramedics arrive. Keep going until they tell you they are ready to take over. Some of their kit takes a while to set up so if you're doing it well, they will let you continue. All snakes in Victoria, Australia are venomous. Firefighter training. If there is a fire, crawl out of the building. Do not stand up to run. One or two breaths of smoke are enough to do major damage and require hospitalization if you get out at all. It may be warm where you are crawling, but standing up can cook your skin and your lungs. The smoke at eye level can be more than 600 degrees C 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. If you can't see and don't know the room layout, crawl with your feet, legs in front of you sliding on your ass. Do not crawl face first, or you may take a dive down a staircase in the confusion. Get down low and go go go. This reminds me, if you're caught in a river, while tubing, rafting, etc. you may be tempted to doggy paddle or swim to save energy. Um, but you want to turn your body as best you can to float on your back, so your feet are in the direction of the downstream current, in a passive way. Remember, nose and toes, equals face up, toes up, your feet, loose legs, do not lock your knees, will take the impact of any submerged rocks, etc and you can push away from them rather than getting a head or chest injury. Yes, legs count. This is advisable usually only for white water scenarios. A side stroke is usually the most energy efficient method of swimming for a rescue if there's no danger of underwater hazards. If a person asks you for something in the street, a light, the time, whatever, always keep the person in your eye line. So if they ask for the time, don't just look down at your watch. Raise your arm slightly so your watch is in sight. I was told this years ago at a self-defense thing at a corporate retreat type of event, and I wondered if it was ever going to be useful or just something to pad out the teacher's session. Then, a decade later, I was on the street late at night on my way home, and someone approached me and asked for the time. I did this, told him the time, and he just kinda stood there. Then he started asking some weird, clearly improvised, question about how he was looking for his friend's house, and he was sure it was on that street and he had a yellow car similar to the one behind me. I didn't look back, but just said yeah, yellow, uh huh and he pointed directly behind me. I said yeah, the yellow car. I saw it as I walked by, so, he paused for a second, looking like that meme of the woman with the equations around her head, then just yelled oh, frick you, and stormed off. It was only afterwards I realized that I think he wanted me to look away so he could slug me, but he wasn't prepared to attack someone that was looking right at him. I used to bicycle commute through a bad neighborhood. 99.99% .99 of the time I had no issues. I had an old bicycle and didn't look like I had money. One morning though, 14 stepped into the street, forming a loose line across my path. One said hey man got a light and I knew that it was bullet. I didn't slow down, or talk with them. I looked one of the kids directly in the eye, aimed my bicycle at him, and pedaled as hard as I could. He instinctively jumped out of the way, 
and the others were caught off guard so they didn't attempt to grab me. If someone threatens you with a gun or something and they want to move you to another location your chance of dying goes up considerably if you agree to relocate. You've gotta throw him off the rhythm. Street smarts. Nah, sister. You're not getting me to no secondary location. Do you want it? Go get it. A friend was carjacked. Guy told her to start driving. So, she did. Right into a cement pillar. Airbag hit the jacker and broke his arm. She ran into the store while he was disoriented. Kept hitting lock button on her key fob to keep him in the car until the cops showed up. Gun wasn't even loaded. Insurance selected to raise on her because of the accident. Though, so that may not be the best way to handle it. Polar bears have insane ADHD. If one is chasing you, intermittently drop clothing items like a hat or gloves. It will stop to sniff them. Normal prey animals don't shed whole pieces of themselves. The bear will be perplexed. Saw him right at somewhere else. The human version of the gecko tail trick. Very clever. Except your hat doesn't grow back. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button and leave a comment which story you liked the most. Subscribe and hit the bell notification for updates on our latest videos. And don't forget to check the links in the description box for more awesome content.